In this demonstration, I'm going to just go over exporting one slice, a slice that we would like to be a JPEG, and we'll go over the optimization settings and how you work with optimization settings in Save for Web. So let's take a look at this image here. For this particular site, there's going to be a series of images that will rotate on the home page. We're just going to export one of them so you can see how exporting slices really works, especially when there's a JPEG. I'm going to use JPEG settings for this particular slice because it's an image. JPEG optimization works best for imagery or anything in which there's a gradient involved or a sky or where there's many, many colors. So it's great for imagery, not so good for line and text art. The first thing I want to do is show my rulers. By showing the rulers, it's going to help me to drag guides. The second step is to drag guides. I'm going to make sure that snapping is turned off for now, but that rulers is checked in order to drag my guidelines into place. So I drag guidelines along all four edges of the image. And this creates the image zone around which we can create our slice. It helps also if I zoom in so I can actually see the accuracy of my guidelines. It's really easy to get off by a few pixels in Photoshop. So it's helpful to use a combination of the move tool and the hand tool, maybe even your navigator panel to move through in a zoomed in format to move those guidelines into place. If you can't move your guides it's because they're locked and you need to go under view and make sure that lock guides is unchecked. So I'm going to move around to the top see how that one's looking. It looks like it could come down a few pixels and once I'm happy I can zoom out and I can create my slice. So I've shown my rulers, I've dragged guidelines on all edges of the image and now I'm going to use my slice tool. The slice tool is hiding here under the crop tool and it's grouped with the slice select tool which we'll use later when we go to setting optimization JPEG settings. So with the slice tool I can now click and drag and create my slice. But one important thing I must tell you is turn snapping on. Because you've already dragged your guidelines into exact place, if you've got snapping turned on and you have snap to guides checked, it's going to make everything worlds easier in creating this slice. I don't have to be super accurate with the mouse. I just click and drag. Boom, there's my slice. Now I can give the slice a name. Using the slice select tool, I double click on the slice and I can give it a name. So we'll call this home image one. Because it will be in a series, I added a zero one and we could add, you know, a number of images using this naming convention. So this will be home in image underscore zero one. Also note that I use an underscore because it will not put any spaces in the names which some uh, some browsers, some software have difficulty reading. So it's a good habit to get into to not put any, to not allow for any spaces in your file names. We're not going to type anything in the URL field. We're not using Photoshop in this case to create code. This is code related. This gives an address or a uniform resource locator where the image could be clicked and where it would take the viewer. The target specifies the frame in which the URL or uniform resource locator address opens. The message text would be if we had created a pop-up message when you roll over this graphic and the alt tag is just an alternative um, text for the browser. 
All of these things are code related and would help Photoshop to create code if we were in fact using Photoshop for code, but we are not in this case. So we just created a name and hit OK in Slice Options. Again, to bring up Slice Options, you use the Slice Select tool, double click, and bring up Slice Options. Now I'm ready to export this and create my optimization settings. If I go into File, Save for Web, I'm able to select the slice that I want. Notice how the user slice has a blue box that lets me know that it's a user defined slice as opposed to the gray slices that are defined by Photoshop and as default. But we want to select the user defined slice using the slice select tool. I can tell that it's selected in two ways. First of all, it gives me a little yellow line outline which you may or may not be able to see in the demonstration. Also, I can see the, col the colors and the full generation of the colors. Do you see the banding? This isn't a very good optimization setting for this image. You can see that it's set to GIF. A better optimization setting for images is JPEG. So we choose JPEG. It works better where there's gradients and lots of colors. Right now I have optimization setting to high. And I can see at the bottom, underneath the image, this little box here, it lets us know how long it's going to take to load this graphic using the optimization setting. If I up the compression quality to maximum, you can see that the image size grew and that it would take 11 seconds possibly for this image to load in kind of a slow download setting. If we set our baseline to cable, like the slowest cable and DSL setting, that's a pretty good baseline, but it's not very realistic. Most people have faster download times, but not everybody does. So we'll use the download Base, baseline is 256 kilobits per second for a cable or a DSL line. But it's nice to know that you can change those settings to test and figure out how, how fast each graphic is going to load. The object of JPEG optimization is to use the lowest possible optimization setting with the quickest loading time and so if you can compromise in some of the quality of the image you're going to get a faster loading time. We're going to have optimized checked. It creates a smaller file overall. Another important element to choose is convert to sRGB. This ensures that we're going to have better saturation throughout in the image. If I I've noticed that not having convert to sRGB checked, I lose some critical saturation and the, the images end up looking a little bland, a little washed out. So I've noticed that having this setting checked is helpful. Um, we don't have any metadata in this, in this case, so we'll select none. The quality is set to 60. We could up that quality, but I think that if I move the hand, it kind of gives us a preview of what the image is going to look like, and I think it's looking pretty good. As opposed to if we had a low setting, everything looks very pixelated around the face and then the background. So I think I was, I was pretty happy with the high setting. That seems to give us just enough resolution and a quick loading time, a fairly small file, 54 55 kilobits. Really small. That's a good optimum size. And because we've already named this image, I am can go ahead and click Save. And it brings up Save Optimized As. Now the default settings are going to put the images in a folder called Images for us. And as you can see on my desktop, there already is a folder called Images. But I can choose a different place for this image to be exported. Say I was working on a project here for the class, 
in this module. And, well, I've already got a images folder there, but let's say it was for specifically for this project for quiz. And it's going to put an images folder. Wherever I designate, it's going to automatically, by default, create an images folder for me. The format I'm going to choose is images only. We're not using Photoshop to export code, so we don't want HTML, we don't want HTML and images, we want images only. I don't need to worry about this save as because I've already given the slice a name in my slice options dialog box previously. And the slices I want it to export is the selected slices as opposed to all slices. Just the one I have selected. And I hit save. Now if I navigate to the class folder, module 10 and for quiz, you can see that it's created the images folder for me. And there it is. Preview is showing us that we have this JPEG that's about 56 kilobits in size and it named it for us home image underscore zero one. Isn't that handy? So to review Creating a slice is as easy as going under View, showing, um, making sure that you have your guides showing, making sure that your rulers are checked. When you're drawing the guidelines initially, uncheck Snap, and then you can draw guides as needed onto the stage. When you want to create your slice, you use your slice tool, you turn snapping on, and you use the guidelines as a snapping mechanism to create your slice. Then we used the slice select tool to double click and name the image. We weren't worried about the other four options because they were code related. Once we've named our slice, then we set the optimization settings in Save for Web and Devices. Here we were able to select the slice using the Slice Select tool and choose JPEG settings, going for the best compression setting. Probably, you know, the, we're, we're going for small image size, but optimal compression settings, and we can see how that changes in this image view window depending on what setting we have selected and it also shows us what size that graphics going to be on export when we were happy with that we hit save and then we chose a place for the images folder to be created we chose the format of images only we used the default settings for now which created the images folder by default and the selected slices as opposed to all of the slices and we hit save. And this concludes creating a JPEG slice using the slice tool.